Hi Bobcats, this is Miss Lee. In today's lesson, we're going to learn how to graph rational numbers on a number line. And in this video, we're going to cover positive rational numbers on a number line. Make sure you have your notes so that you can work the example right along with me. Pause the video whenever necessary if I start going too fast so that you can stay caught up. Okay, how are we going to order these rational numbers using a number line? We'll take a look. What do you see? I see decimals, I see percents, I see mixed fractions. We have rational numbers in all different forms. And in order to graph them on a number line, we need to convert them to the same form. Either convert them all as fractions, or convert them all as decimals, or all as percent. Whichever you prefer. A tip would be, don't convert them to fractions. Once you convert them to fractions, you're not done because then you have to find common denominators. It's a lot of extra work, very easy to make mistakes. So I would stick with either converting them all to, de to decimals or converting them all to percents. Now for my examples, I'm going to convert them to decimals. I'm actually going to take it a step further and convert them to money form. Just because it's easy for me to, to think in terms of money. You don't have to think in terms of money. Okay, you can just leave it in decimal form, or if you like percent better, you can change the decimals to a percent. Okay, so it's totally up to you what you're more comfortable with. If you want to do percents, then once I get my decimal form, just do your DP and change that percent to a decimal. Okay, here we go. First thing, write, rewrite everything, all the rational numbers in the same form. So again, I'm using decimals. And I'm actually going to use money. So I already have four tenths as a decimal, but I'm just going to add a zero so it looks like 40 cents. And again, you don't have to do that. If you want to change it to a percent, just do your DP once, twice, it would be 40%. Here, 80%. Again, here's your DP. If I'm going to go from percent to decimal, I'm moving to the left two places. One, two. Whenever you convert their form, change them to a different form, please make sure that you're writing the new form above it or below it. I know you can do some of it in your head, but we as teachers want to see that you know how to do it, so we want to see it written down. Here I have one tenth, or if I added a zero, it's ten cents. A hundred and sixty percent, again, change my percent to a decimal, move two places to the left, and it becomes one dollar and sixty cents. Here, one and three tenths, I can turn that into a dollar thirty. Do my DP again on this percent, two places to the left, and I get $2.50. And here I have a mixed number. So I'm going to rewrite this in decimal form, two and nine tenths. Luckily, it already has a 10 as the denominator. It sounds like a decimal. So I can just write it as two and nine tenths. And let me add a zero to make it $2.90. Okay hard part is done. That was the hard part, changing everything to the same form. You're going to get lots and lots of practice with your fraction decimal percent conversions, so it's awesome. All right, that's done. Now we're ready to look at our number line. When you look at your number line, you need to see how it's being numbered. Is it a blank number line? If it's a blank number line, then you get to number it yourself. Is it already numbered? Yes, ours is. And we can see it goes from zero to one hole, to two holes, to three holes, but each whole number is divided into parts. So we need to figure out how many parts it's divided into. So I'm gonna start at my zero, and I'm gonna count how many parts are between zero and one. Now this is just like playing Monopoly, the board game Monopoly. Everybody starts on the start box, and you roll the dice. But when you go to move, do you count the start box? No, you move first, and that first box would count as one. It's the same thing here. We're starting at zero, but we don't count zero. So let's count each part. Here's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. We haven't made it to one yet. Ten. So there are ten parts. From zero to one, our whole number is cut into ten parts. It's cut into tenths, right? Okay, so let me go ahead and get rid of that part. And I'm going to go ahead and label tenths. It's the same as ten cents. 
So this would be 10 cents here or a tenth. This would be 20 cents, 30 cents. This one would be 40 cents. I'm labeling every other one just because I don't have a lot of room and I wanna be able to read what I have written down. Uh, if you have more room on your paper, then you could label every part if you wanted to. Here's 50 cents. I do like labeling my halves. Here's 60 cents, 70 cents, 80 cents, 90 cents, $1. Then this would be a dollar 10, a dollar 20, a dollar 30, a dollar 40. This would be a dollar 50. A dollar 60, 70, 80, 90, two dollars. Two dollars and 10 cents, 220, 230, 240, 250. All right, so I like to see my number lines, the, my parts labeled. Uh, when I get to the larger ones, I can just do the halves, or you could do all of them. I could do a dollar twenty here, a dollar forty here, dollar fifty, a dollar sixty, dollar seventy, a dollar eighty, dollar ninety, two dollars, and so on. It's kind of up to you how you want to label it. I do want to see the whole numbers, and I want to see the half amounts labeled for sure, and I want to see it cut into tenths for each hole, the little lines that cut them into tenths. Okay, now that that's done, we are ready to go ahead and place our rational numbers on the number line. Once we get them on the number line, they will then be in order, right? Okay, the first one is four tenths or 40 cents. So I'm gonna look down here. I actually already have 40 cents labeled. So I'm gonna place a dot on the number line and then above it, not below it, but above it, I'm gonna write the rational number. Okay, but I'm gonna write the rational, the original rational number we were given. We were given four tenths, zero and four tenths. So there we go. My next is 80 cents. Well, here's my 80 cents right here. So I place the dot on the number line at 80 cents. And above it, I'm gonna write the original rational number form, which was 80%. Next is 10 cents, which would be right here. The original form I was given was zero and one tenth. A dollar sixty. So here's a dollar fifty. Here's my dollar sixty. The original rational number form was a hundred and sixty percent. Then I have a dollar thirty, which would go halfway between a dollar twenty and a dollar forty. It'd go right here. And the original rational number form was one and three tenths. Two dollars and fifty cents. I have labeled already. So I place the dot, and the original form is 250%. My $2.90, that's 10 cents less than $3, so it goes right here. And my original rational number form is 2 and 9 tenths. And we're done. Then if you have to put them in order from least to greatest, you just start at zero. So you start at 1 tenth, and you just like list them. 1 tenth, 4 tenths, 80%, 1 and 3 tenths, 160%, and so on. If they wanted them in order from greatest to least, you would start way to the right because the greatest number is furthest to the right. Two and nine tenths, 250%, 160%, one and three tenths, and so on. Super easy, guys. Again, this might have been a little bit fast. It's just because I'm so comfortable with doing this. And the more you do it, and trust me, you're gonna get lots of practice, the easier it is for you to do. So this is how we would order positive rational numbers on a number line. And in the next video, you're gonna learn how to order negative rational numbers on a number line. Good job, Bobcats.